My name is Kara Deal and I'm a senior at Liberty University, majoring in Government, Western Legal Traditions, and minoring in International Relations. Currently, I'm interning for the American Bar Association in Washington, D.C. Since middle school, when I did a research paper on Sandra Day O'Connor, I've been intrigued by the Supreme Court and the impact of its decisions upon the lives of Americans. My education at Liberty University has served to strengthen my interest in constitutional law. Further, reading Supreme Court cases has sparked my interest in the original intent of the Constitution and how America is moving so far in many cases away from that intent. Further, I believe that if America is to remain under the rule of law, it's vital that her Supreme Law be interpreted and applied consistently. Lastly, I chose this topic for my paper because constitutional interpretation is not simply a topic to be pondered by academics. Rather, it is a topic that affects the everyday lives of all Americans, from what educators can teach in public schools to how many hours a day employers can require their employees to work. The title of my thesis is Through the Looking Glass of Constitutional Interpretation. The thesis of my paper states, the only solution for the current relative basis of constitutional meaning is to abandon a relative view of the Constitution as a living document and to consider once again the original intent of the Constitution. In my paper, I began by examining different methods of interpretation, from textualism to pragmatism. Textualism is a method that focuses solely upon the words, the grammar, and the syntax of the Constitution. Originalism, which is the focus of my paper, is an interpretive approach that focuses upon the text of the Constitution as well as its historical meaning. This includes the consideration of the actual intention of the drafters of the Constitution. My paper also examines non-interpretivist methods of interpretation, such as pragmatism and modernism. These methods ask, how the evolving standards of decency that mark the progress of maturing society should be taken into consideration when making Supreme Court decisions. In doing research for my paper, I also examined the history of constitutional interpretation. I found that the early court's reliance upon the original intent of the Constitution is demonstrated throughout their early decisions. Justice Felix Frankfurter summarized the early court's approach when he stated, what governs is the Constitution, and not what we have written about it. <coughs> However, while the early court relied upon the original intent of the Constitution, beginning with Trop v. Dulles in 1958, the court began to treat the Constitution as a living document rather than a written document with a specific meaning. This case involves the question of the Eighth Amendment's Cruel and Unusual Punishment Clause. In Trop v. Dulles, the court stated, the Eighth Amendment must draw its meaning from the evolving standards of decency that mark the progress of a maturing society. Such language began to move the court further from the original intent of the Constitution. In my thesis, I also examined the Establishment Clause as a specific example of the difficulties that result when the Supreme Court does not consider the original intent of the Constitution. The Establishment Clause jurisprudence of the Supreme Court especially interests me because some cases regarding the Establishment Clause today are often decided contrary to the original intent of the Establishment Clause. The original intent of this clause was not to prevent Congress from establishing a national religion, was to prevent Congress from establishing a national religion. The Bill of Rights was essentially a concession to certain anti-federalists who feared the national government would become so powerful that it would infringe upon the people's free exercise of religion. Further, the Establishment Clause was intended to promote the Free Exercise Clause and not hinder it. The original understanding of the Establishment Clause encompassed principles of liberty of conscience, freedom of religious expression, religious pluralism and equality, and separation of church and state. Later interpretations of the Establishment Clause, however, failed to consider its complete original understanding. Rather, separation of church from state became the sole focus of Establishment Clause decisions in recent years. My paper suggests that the Supreme Court return to considering the original intent of the Constitution when making its decisions and cease from making decisions contrary to that intent. 
concur with Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia when he stated, if you somehow adopt the philosophy that the Constitution itself is not static, but rather it morphs from age to age to say whatever it ought to say, which is probably whatever the people want it to say, you eliminate the entire purpose of a Constitution. And that is essentially what the so-called living Constitution leaves you with. This paper was especially beneficial to me as I plan to attend law school after graduation and hopefully continue studying constitutional law and gaining knowledge that will help me in a career in the legal arena in the future. Thank you.